lovely image to associate with my talk, but I think we can find some inspiration in it. So we're all here because we believe that there are ideas that are worth spreading. You know, it's pretty tough to spread ideas. First of all, of course, you have to reach people, and the TED events, the online videos, they're phenomenal in that regard. But that's really just the first step, right? I mean, the whole point is to take the seed, plant it, care for it, so it can grow into meaningful actions. I want to talk today about just one of the challenges associated with that taking an idea into action. If you all could do something for me, please, could you just swallow like you're a doctor or something? Now, suppose I handed you a clean glass, a glass you'd be happy to drink, and I asked you to spit in it and then drink it. It's not a very pleasant idea, right? But of course, rationally, there should be no problem. You're happy to swallow your own saliva. You just did. You're happy to drink out of the glass, but not your own saliva. Something really important about the fact that it's outside now. Well, similarly, when we want to pass on ideas, we have to realize that it takes more than a rational argument to make an idea attractive to swallow. Ideas have got to look good in the glass. So, you might think I'm going to talk about marketing or about salesmanship or about messaging or incentives. Those are important issues too. But I want to talk today about something different, how actually rational argument can actually increase conflict totally unnecessarily. Sometimes we put things in a box of good ideas and bad ideas when we don't need to. Now, the theme of our talk today is crossroads. And I was thinking, wouldn't it be nice, you know, if you could have a signpost in front of you all the time? Well, exactly where do I need to go and how far away is it and at what angle, you know? But we aren't so lucky, right? We're constantly navigating our lives, making choices, and we don't exactly know that we're going the right direction. So I want to suggest a much more realistic image than looking at a signpost for what our lives are really like in terms of crossroads and managing our decisions. Life's kind of like being in a maze, right? Lots of crossroads. Not sure which way to go, though. Where to get that cheese? Success, happiness, the good life, fulfillment. But we got to make choices one way or the other, just like the mice do. You know, scientists have been researching with mice and mazes for over 100 years. I want to tell you just about one particular mouse, a white-footed mouse, but this is a general principle. It applies to lots of species and lots of learning environments, both in the lab and outside in the wild. So what happens? Of course, you use the cheese, because mice like cheese, and you know how to condition and train the mouse, and eventually the mouse can learn to go through the maze. Goes through it one time, two times, three times, four times, smart mouse, five times, six times it goes the wrong direction. What happened? Put it through again. Goes the right way, goes the right way, goes right, go! Oh, what happened? So scientists said, you know, mice, they're kind of smart. I mean, they, they can learn to navigate a maze. They're not as smart as we are, of course. We're not going to sometimes take the wrong route home unless we're not paying attention or maybe have a little too much reno. But, you know, mice, they aren't quite as smart as we are. They, they have a persistent level of error. Let me leave our mice for a moment in the maze. We'll come back. We're going to invite them actually to the TED Talk today. Uh, you all have been in this position, right? It's not a very pleasant one because you know you have to give yourself medicine. Your eyes are sore. They hurt. But it's difficult, right? Because you keep wanting to blink right as you're putting it in. It takes an act of willpower. This is something we deal with all the time. This is part of everyday life, right? We're at cross purposes. One of our purposes, a pretty sensible one, blink quickly before something comes in your eye. Another purpose is a little more difficult one. It's get that medicine in and you'll feel better. Think about dieting, right? You 
really, really, really don't want to eat that fatty food, that sugary food. So you go on a diet. But when you go into the store, you go into the kitchen, go into a restaurant, you really feel the tension. It's actually more painful than trying to give yourself uh, eye drops, isn't it? Or how about the famous one? You may have read St. Augustine, very famous one from him. He, he confesses when he was young. He wanted to, of course, be a good Christian. And so he says, I was a young person. I, 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 prayed. I prayed to God. I said, Lord, make me good. But not yet, right? Now, the way I'm putting this, you might think, oh, cross purpose is just another example of something we're all very familiar with. We have these higher purposes, rational purposes, sophisticated. And then we have our lower nature, the, you know, the reflexes, the urges. But in fact, cross purposes are ubiquitous in nature, parasites and host, predators and prey, the fight, flight, reflex. If you think about the way natural selection works, it would be a miracle if it were otherwise. What does natural selection do? It favors a feature because it serves a purpose that gives an advantage to the possessor of that feature or trait. And so as evolution by natural selection proceeds, there's a proliferation of things that have purposes. And if you have lots of purposes, there's lots of opportunities for things to be at cross purposes. Now, it raises an interesting question. How are you going to manage cross purposes? Now, here's one way of thinking about it. You might say, well, cross purposes, we can think about them in terms of various sorts of ideas. We're here again because we think some ideas are worth spreading. But what are ideas? Lots of different kinds of ideas. One particular useful way of thinking about ideas is into three different categories. So you get idea of category one. Hey, what's the world like? Scientists, basic science is all about that. Describe and explain the world. Then you got ideas of category two. Well, how could the world be? How should it be? Visionary ideas. And then you have ideas sort of in between, means to end. How do you change the way the world is to make it like that? And you think about a typical TED talk, right? Someone comes out and says, I had these experiences, or my research gave me this data. And I realized the world's different than I thought it was. I have a new idea, type one. And so I thought, you know, the world could be different. It should be different. So I started thinking about what I could do to make it different. Ideas of type three. Inventors are like that. Any innovator is an idea of type three, right? So that's great, right? We love TED Talks. That structure makes a lot of sense. Let's try to use it, though, to look at cross purposes. Let's bring our mice back in. So, can you all guess what I'm going to suggest is actually going on with our error-prone mice? What's going on with our error-prone mice? <laughs> it's getting bored. Cross purposes. One part of the mouse's brain, you know what he's saying? He's saying, I know this maze, go that away. Another part of the mouse's brain is saying, now oh, come on. Time to explore, time to check things out a bit. So now, if you try to decide which one is right, you might think, there's a rational answer to this question, right? Which one has the right view, the better view? So, which one does? And more important, how do you know? We've got to put ourselves in the position of the mice, bring the mice out here. They can make a case for themselves, right? You might think, huh. You know, they both made a pretty good case. That's exactly what Mother Nature figured out, right? Why cut out your alternatives? Keep them both. They're both useful ways. So, what can we learn from this? It can be a little bit scary, but science is coming in. Not much has been published yet, but it's coming. And it turns out that the cells in our nervous system, the individual neurons, act more like little selfish agents than they act like
dutiful slaves. That means that somehow all the things our brains have evolved to accomplish, all the sophisticated things we can do, are done by individual neurons forming shifting alliances with other neurons. And why do they do this? Because they want to have more friends, influence more people, and get more resources. It's a little bit scary because we know that societies based upon shifting alliances can be prone to breakdowns, might worry about our minds. It's also sort of reassuring because what is more intelligent and adaptable than the human mind? So how can we take this? What, what lesson can we take from Mother Nature here? We need to deal with cross purposes and it looks like that works out okay. Well, here's an unfortunate thing. Think about cross purposes again. What is a road? It has a purpose. It's a purpose to get from A to B and B to A, or from C to D and D to C. The place where the two roads meet, the crossroads, that's a site of cross purpose. And that's where the conflicts arise. And here's the problem. We often make a very foolish and wasteful decision at this point. We assume that because we're at cross purposes at that point, that the people we're at cross purposes with are fundamentally opposed to us, and we start criticizing them, you know? Well, they have the wrong ideas of this type one, and you know, wrong ideas, wrong values type two, and wrong values of type three. We get locked into a totally counterproductive us-them dynamic. Imagine the mice, right? You could easily imagine them dividing into two hostile groups like that. But, but wouldn't the mice be worse off if one side won completely? So we face a kind of Goldilocks dilemma. We want to spread ideas, but for ideas to spread, they have to take root, they have to be growing into actions. And we can only do so much alone, right? So we have to bring ideas into the office place. We have to bring ideas into our political parties, into the neighborhood, into our professions. But we also have to worry because we have that tendency to get into this us-them dynamic. So how do we manage this? Well, we face a Goldilocks challenge. Goldilocks, for those of you who don't know the story, is the girl who tried to find the middle ground, the just right middle ground. We need a just right middle ground between being active, loyal, reliable members of groups that can get things done, that can turn ideas into action, but at the same time resist the temptation, the tendency, toward groupthink. So how do you do that? How do you manage this Goldilocks challenge? I wish I had a really good answer for you, but I do have a suggestion I think makes a difference. We have to have a default assumption. Just an assumption, like any assumption, of course. If it's wrong, you abandon it. The default assumption is that when we're in conflict with another group, it's because we're at cross purposes rather than taking for granted that that group is motivated, defined by a whole host of bad ideas. So this image, if you think about overpasses, they're a pretty darn nice way of dealing with cross purposes. Of course, you can't always build an overpass. And even if you build a lot of overpasses, Every road eventually has to come down to the same level. There's going to be conflict. There's going to be places where people have to yield to one another. But to go along with the Goldilocks challenge, I want to suggest a Goldilocks motto. You know, an overpass, when possible, just right. Thank you. <laughs>